Now, if you have just watched these videos and you knew this before, or you're just finding this out and you're not going to do it, then you really, really do not deserve to own a car. So there are many things about owning a car. You don't just go to a dealership and say, oh, I want to buy this car, and then you just buy it and take it home. Owning a car is like taking care of a baby, except that in this case, this baby never grows. So you're taking care of a baby continuously every day, guys. There are so many things you're supposed to know about owning cars, and there are so many things that you shouldn't let happen to your cars. So today I'm going to be telling you about the six things you should never ever ever let happen to your cars guys it's right with me if you're new here please do want to subscribe tap on the bell icon to turn on post notifications and we will get on just about right now so before we dive into it i just want to tell you something you might want to sit and watch this video comfortably because points four and five will totally blow your mind away so now if i'm going to begin the first point would be ignition like a lot of people tend to forget or ignore things like this but there are many reasons your ignition begins to have issues the most common cause being when you have too many keys attached to your car key so you have all of that weight on the key holder of your car key you put your car key into the ignition that weight pulls on your ignition thereby ruining or even spoiling your ignition in the long run so keep it simple keep it light don't ruin your ignition with too many keys the second thing to totally avoid or not let happen to your car would be car or engine issues yes now this particular point a lot of people tend to um, ignore because when you see your car warning signs on especially in nigeria where i stay some people just don't really care that much so they tend to ignore these warning signs but these warning signs are there for a reason they are there to warn you okay so now of course they come in different color codes so most of the time when you see that um, your dashboard, there's an icon with a blue light on your dashboard or your gauge cluster or whatever it is, it means that something is activated. You'd notice that when your headlamps are on. Um, when the warning sign is in yellow, it means that something needs to be checked or something needs to be serviced. But when it's red, as in code red, it means don't touch that car. Don't take that car out. The, in fact, the only place you're supposed to be taking it to is your mechanic straight up. And most of the time, these things are caused by issues. And okay, let's say the engine, for example, maybe you're using bad fuel or you're using bad oil or even heavy oil or oil that is not even recommended by the manufacturer. Or maybe you're using stuff that are just not compatible or stuff that spoiling or ruining your car in a way. Like I said, cars are babies. Except that these babies, they don't grow old, so you need to keep taking care of them and giving them your attention and your time, okay? So most of the time, what you're supposed to do is use good stuff, use a manufacturer's um, recommendation, and take care, take really good care of that baby under the hood. Without it, you'd be walking. Point number three, never, ever, 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 I said that how many times, ever, 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 let water get in yeah you know sometimes it's inevitable and then you have to drive through floods or flooded areas that is pretty common over here but somewhere in your head you're driving uh let's say something you consider to be an off-roader or a car that can swim and stuff like that uh-uh uh-uh the difference between you and someone who drives a sedan or a more quote-unquote problematic car is that you who is driving the off-roader you are going to have problems only that they won't be as often as someone who's driving a regular sedan in the flood okay so you'll be able to come out of the flood no doubt but in a few days you'd be at at Camero's workshop too or should i say scotty's workshop too depending on where you are so yes keep that car out of water the moment water gets into the car, components begin to spoil. You begin to experience things like rust. Your electrical components begin to fry. It's like, say you're charging your phone, you get, or you have something connected to electricity and you let water touch it. You either get shocked, which wouldn't happen with your car, but those components would fry, which would happen to your car. 
and thereby you begin to see some cars just randomly catching fire on the road. Nah, something happened before. There was a reason that happened. Or things just begin to go bad or you keep going to your mechanic or your brain box. It's just, it's just gone. Yeah, so try to keep your car out of water as much as possible so you stay away from the mechanic as much as possible before i move on to the next point guys please do not forget to hit subscribe below share this video like it it helps with my algorithm and most importantly turn on post notifications so you do not miss any update from me at all now remember at the beginning i said the fourth and fifth points will be those interesting points that you need to see yeah that's where we are right now so point number four please i beg you do not overdo the tire pressure thing do not over inflate your tires yes sometimes they tell you oh it's good your tire won't go down fast no it's not good okay think of it this way okay let's say you are pumping or blowing air into a balloon then you tend to overdo it so it's really stretched here yeah? put it on the floor maybe sandy floor of maybe a room you haven't swept in a while or somewhere that has like tiny stones or even on a grassy plain it would pop like it would just pop because it's overstretched there's too much air in the balloon so it's the same thing with your tires actually so you're driving on the express road and your tire just goes boom or it's even parked your car is stationary and just pops you understand so these things are usually not safe so while trying to keep your tire pressure on you know the maximum level don't overdo it okay keep it just right let it just be right because you would not want to be going on top speed on say third mainland bridge and your tire pops if you don't exactly control that car you are going to tumble some assault and thereby like having an accident most of the time it's not good even if the car is stationary it's, it's just not good so don't over inflate your tires keep it just right this also doesn't mean you shouldn't pump your tires please don't keep the tire pressure low but don't keep it inflated too inflated let it be just right Capish. point number five yet another really important point especially because this point has a very 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 huge role to play with electric cars well we have that in our normal ic internal combustion engine cars too but electric cars you get so this is really important do not run your car till the battery dies okay don't run your car till the battery dies like totally it's really bad okay think about it you use a phone here yeah? people tell you oh it's bad for you to run your phone battery down till it's completely dead it's the same thing with cars. I don't know if you're catching my drift. Okay. Um, usually, I'm going to use that of uh, the IC engines. Do you know those small batteries that we use? Normally, you're supposed to test uh, for, like, you're supposed to check the number of volts or power, the amount of power your battery has. You understand? So, usually, most of the time, you're not supposed to have less than 12 volts. The moment it's on 12 volts, you need to recharge your battery. If it discharges below 12 volts, especially if it discharges below 10.5 volts, then you are creating problems for yourself. Now, do not let your car sit idle with a dead battery. I need to say that again. Do not let your car sit idle with a dead battery. If you do that, the lead sulfate in the battery will form hardened crystals, which the battery charger would not be able to break off. You get. Now, if you also let your car sit idle with the battery connected, you do know that your battery is still going down, right? Because there are certain other things. Your car might not be running, but the battery still controls some other things or power some other things. For example, the car alarm. You get so the battery will still go down and if you leave your car idle for four weeks you come back and your battery is dead that is even for a car whose battery is healthy the more your battery runs down the less efficient the battery becomes no matter the battery battery for ice cars or battery for electric cars so your car will become less efficient thereby spoiling real fast you get so it's really not good to leave your battery dead for a long time it's not good to let your car run so the battery is dead and if you are even going to jump start your battery you should at least do it right okay connect the positive terminal of the dead battery to the positive terminal of the car with the battery that is running do the same for the negatives and go and start the dead car it would come up if you do crossword puzzle 
cross connect negative to positive and positive to negative the positive terminals and the negative terminals these terminals have different purposes that they serve so you are going to kill and you are going to ruin and you are going to destroy certain things in your car and later you'll be like oh my god something's wrong my car is not coming on i don't know what's going on you ruined your battery thereby ruining your car Did you get so please i beg you don't do that don't mess with the battery it sounds like a minimal thing but it's actually a really big thing if you don't take care of it we are down to the sixth and the final thing you should not let happen to your car okay so this i have titled more issues do not allow more issues arise with your car these issues can also arise when you leave your car sitting idle for a period of time now this is the thing your cars were not, they were not actually built to sit at low rpm they were not built to sit idle your cars were built to be stretched so even if you live in an urban city and you experience daily traffic and you feel like oh well this car goes out every day i take it to work every day mm -mm, that's not enough you still need to stretch that car leaving your car idle or taking it out like that you're actually doing more damage than good to it it's better if you even take it out on a daily but leaving it idle come on it begins to, you begin to find out that like your car has issues like carbon build up um your brakes are getting stiff your steering wheel is shaking from from sitting in one place you understand so your car is actually not built to sit in a place once in a while maybe on a weekend early in the morning before people come out depending on the city you live in in the world take your car out okay step on the gas stretch that car yes your car was built to be a queen but i promise you inside all of that elegance beauty and style there's a bit of hoodlum in there so stretch that car so for the sake of the entire video and for you beautiful people that are watching i'm going to take you on a quick recap number one ignition issues avoid this as much as possible especially by taking up or taking off a lot of weight from your key holder or the key holder of your car key number two avoid as much as possible engine issues pay attention to those engine warning signs or those warning signs on your dashboard please do your routine maintenance number three try as much as possible to make sure water doesn't enter the engine take care of that baby number four keep that tire pressure appropriate do not inflate your tires and do not let the pressure run low number five come on don't run your car till the battery dies whether you're driving an internal combustion engine car or an electric car same issues just don't let it happen number six more issues stretch that car take it for a daily drive a daily walk it's your baby let it breathe stretch it and that is that now if you knew this before or you're just finding this out and you're not going to do it then you really really do not deserve to own a car at all i said that period so beautiful people keep that car well taken care of like i said earlier she's a queen she's elegant she's beautiful she's classy even if she's an oldie even if it's a rugged man or a hot guy in a tux that car is beautiful and still it has a bit of hoodlum inside so do everything that i have just said and you would not have too many reasons to go to your mechanic in fact you only be going for your routine checks most of the time unless your car just has like factory issues which is not very common anyway so thank you guys for watching i love you so much thank you for staying with me up until now if you like this video please do what to give me a thumbs up yeah do that right there like right now i'm waiting for you do it quickly and subscribe share and I will see you same time next week. I love you guys so much. Bye.